Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every single day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it is cheesy, but it's true. And I'm so glad that you're joining me here today in my house in Auckland City for day 122 on our devotional reading plan. Let's have a look at our scriptures that we're reading today. As always, they're in the descriptions on every platform. Psalm 55 verse 1 to 11, John chapter 3, verse 1 to 21, and Joshua chapter 21, verse 20 to chapter 22, verse 34. So those are our scriptures that we're reading today. Let's get into our brew. Now, yesterday I was sad because I got no flavor out of this bean. It is the Pacifica from Havana, the Wellington Coffee Roastery. I just, there was just no flavor. I'm supposed to be getting vanilla, rich cocoa, and honeycomb, but I got nothing out of the Chemex yesterday. So I thought I'd give this a try in the plunger today, and then tomorrow we'll give it a go in the espresso and see what we can get out of it. But I'm really hoping that we can get something out of this flavor because I don't want to give this, I don't want this, this just doesn't feel right. Havana, for me, have never let me down in the past. I normally get one of their other ones that's very lovely. I think it's got like fudgy vibes in it. I don't know if we've done that yet on The Daily Brew. Maybe we should do that, but... Today, we're going to give this a go in the plunger. Check out Butt First Coffee for their plunger brew method. Not sponsored, but could be. Could be. In fact, if there's anybody who does want to sponsor me, let me know. Anyway, let's give this a go. Okay. A lot more flavor in there. It does say that it's supposed to be buttery and sweet. And I'm getting the sweet vibe across. Still not a richness, that richness of cocoa that I'm looking for, it's just not there. There's not a strong depth of flavor to this that I would like to get from my coffee. I, I, I don't like drinking stuff that just tastes a bit bitter, a bit, bit average in taste. I just don't really, you know? But there's no, there's no, you know, there's no taste in here at all. There's no like, there's no, yeah, I'm just am disappointed. What I will do is it's not as bad as it was yesterday. So I'm going to give this a 3.5 in the plunger. I know. It doesn't feel right, does it? Doesn't feel right. Something feels off. I'm hoping tomorrow's espresso is going to redeem it. But I can't, I, in all good conscience, I can't give this more than what, what I'm giving it now. So unfortunately, Havana, you, you, you're not doing me some goods here. But that's okay. It could be up to me, and I could be super wrong in my brewing method, but I've been doing this now for 122 days, and uh, and so you'd think that I kind of know how to brew it. I feel bad. I desperately want to get some flavor out of these beans. Anyway, that is it, though, for the brews today. Let's move on to the devotional, the reason that we are here. And let's use a word that will send shivers down your spine. Are you ready? Confrontation. Yeah, it's an ugly word, but it, it shouldn't be an ugly word, but it is. It is an ugly word. Confrontation is a necessary part of being human. However, in our culture, we've decided that the best way to do this is through the club and hammer technique, when really confrontation should be done with scalpel and tweezers. We have to do this better as Christians, as ambassadors of God. We have to do confrontation better, but how? The world we live in is not short of evil. David articulates this in our psalm today, that there was evil at work in the city. When we face evil that's oppressing and loud, we often want to run like David and escape all of it. We want to shy away from the confrontation that is required. But when it comes to evil, as Christians, we can't afford to hide and escape because we've got the one true thing that can shift it, prayer. We need to confront the evil that we face with prayer. You might have a difficult person that you work with, but remember, as Christians, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against spirit and principality. We have to go into every battle in prayer, understanding that sometimes behind the works of people is an evil spirit that needs to be dealt with, not through anger and argument, but through prayer and petition. When we've prayed, then we take action. If we can't take action, we need to ask the Lord to take action and trust that through the power of our prayer, we would see God's goodness triumph over evil. I believe the key to successful confrontation with people is love. Jesus was the master at confrontation. He never shied away from it. Now, what I'm not, I'm, look, listen, don't swing the pendulum the other way. What I'm not saying is that he went in with rage and anger. That's not what I'm saying. 
His only motive was love. Nicodemus was a powerful man. The Bible says that he was moral and upright, a Pharisee and a member of the Jewish ruling council. And Jesus, he wasn't phased by Nicodemus' title or position. And maybe it's because Jesus comprehended that he himself was also fully God, not just fully man, but fully God. He was aware of who he was. Regardless, Jesus lovingly confronts Nicodemus with this, with his need to be born again. Nicodemus needed to be born again of spirit and water. The outward washing must always be partnered with the inward dwelling of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus confronts Nicodemus, but he confronts Nicodemus with love about his beliefs. Nicodemus, he, he's led by Jesus from where he was to where he needed to be. It's amazing that Jesus never condemns him, not even once. He was a guy who had been part of the Pharisees, right? They'd taken the law of God and twisted it to serve themselves and become a movement of hypocrites. But Jesus, he never once condemns Nicodemus. Why? Because there's a huge difference between condemnation and confrontation. The problem with our culture today is that we've merged the two. We've merged the two. Confrontation and condemnation, we, we've merged the two together. To confront politicians, you need to condemn something about them to get your point across, for example. That's not Jesus' heart, though. Jesus actually came to save us from condemnation. He's not afraid to confront those who need com confronting, but he never does it through condemnation. Jesus explains to us how light confronts the darkness in verse 19 to 21. For every person on the face of the earth, this is the confronting that the gospel message brings. It can be startling and hard to settle with, but at the end of the day, we need to understand that Jesus comes in love. He comes in love. We need to bring this to every confrontation too. The love that Jesus has for you and for art, for me, we need to bring that into the confrontational conversations that we have. We need to be able to see beyond the frustration and help confront the darkness with the light, the love of Jesus. When it comes to confrontation, not all confrontation is wisdom. Without wisdom, confrontation quickly becomes conflict. This happens when the conversation that we have shifts from talking to each other to talking about each other. Personally, I'm really bad at this when my emotion kicks in. It becomes all about the person or the issue rather than uh, talking to that person or talking to that issue. I talk about the person or talk about the issue or even both I combine the two. I talk about how the issue really is that person. I, I, I'm working on it. I'm not very good at it. In our passage in Joshua, we see a huge misunderstanding where a majority of Israel thrust uh, sorry, uh, 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 the majority of Israel, sorry, accused the two, they have trust issues, and accused the two and a half of the other tribes who were doing wrong and disobeying God. That was what they thought was going on. The natural response for the ancient Near East would have been just war, just fight it out. However, instead of heading that way, they decided to confront each other with wisdom and actually have the confrontational conversation. Once they had, they realized that they had no grounds for their fear and that they could trust the other two and a half tribes. We need to apply wisdom in the moments that we want to fight and we need to seek to understand. At times, it's wisdom not to confront the person because the person or the people are just not going to change. I'm not saying we need to avoid or escape. I'm saying that we need to employ wisdom and avoid growing conflict. Sometimes a simple meeting and a conversation laced with love uh, and, and the heart to understand can change everything. Apply wisdom, seek, the, uh, seek to understand, apply love, and speak to the person directly. You may need to apologize for something that you've done. It takes a big person to admit when they were wrong. Also, you may need to accept that you might not end up having agreement and harmony, and that's okay too. The act of confronting the person is, uh, sorry, confronting the person in love is the result, not actually needing them to change. Do what you can. To in love, sorry, do what you can in love and trust God to do the rest. Our job is not to see change all the time. It's up to God to do the changing. It's just up to us to use wisdom and have the confrontational conversations. Verse of the day. Verse of the day today, it's the good old faithful John 3, 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know I had to use this verse. You know I had to. It just had to be done, right? Do you believe? Like, do you actually believe in him? Not that he exists alone, but that he can and will do everything that he said he will do. In hardship, do you believe in him? When you're winning, do you believe that it was him and not you that got you to win? 
Let's believe in Jesus and enter into that eternal life that he promises each and every single one of us. And that is it for today, the Daily Brew done and dusted, day 122. Thank you so much for joining me. I will say this, that as the devotional went on, the lingering taste is a bit of cocoa. But that's all I've got for this brew. That's all I've got for it today. Thank you so much for joining me today. I pray that God is speaking to you as he is with me and that you feel confident in having those confrontational conversations. Just remember, it's all to do with love. If your heart position is love towards that person, having a confrontational conversation with the outcome not being changed, but seeking harmony and clarity. Man, we could live in a way better society if as Christians we could lead the way in that. Hey, here's a confrontation for you. Please, if you haven't done so already, Massive thank you to all of you who have. Follow the podcast, rate the podcast, subscribe on YouTube, click the bell so you never miss a devotion and take a moment and share this with someone who you think could benefit from this devotional. Share about what God is doing in your life. Share about the revelation that you're, that you're seeking. Share about the love that you're growing for the word of God. Chuck it up on a story, on a reel, on a post, on a thing. Send it via pigeon mail. Do whatever you need to do. But let's get the word of God out there into the community and get people going deeper into the word of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. Come back tomorrow for another day, day 123. That'll be us tomorrow. I'll try this as an espresso and see what we can get out of it. Until then, though, if it's the start of your day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight. And we'll see you back here for day 123 on The Daily Brew.